so good evening everybody i welcome you all to this uh, rpc this is ophthalmic research and publication initiatives that we are conducting under the banner of ijac so i welcome all participants from different ijac states and i welcome our mentor for this program dr chaitra jadev who is taking so much of interest in organizing and conducting these programs i welcome professor vinay subodhi the chief coordinator of both of our teaching programs one is the ophthalmic research and publication initiatives the other is ophthalmic resident teaching series today we are very fortunate to have dr sabhisachi sanbukta manager as a speaker today and he will be speaking on uh, how to write case reports so we are uh, I, i welcome you sir we are very fortunate and lucky to have you because you are conducting such programs throughout the year so all our participants will be able to know your depth into this and will guide us every all of us how to write case report because it is said that the case report is the first thing to write or those who want to or learn writing the case report is the best thing to start with so with this brief uh, welcome address i hand over the proceeding to professor bnr sobodi to conduct it you are muted sir thank you dr sabhas patnaik and my screen is visible yes sir yes sir okay so thank you dr patnaik and thank you ijok giving us the opportunity to host so the two of our side programs for the postgraduate students one the ortis and the other or orpi the ophthalmic research and publication initiative this is the 10th series and um, our aim is to um, bring the postgraduate students to about the research and uh, how to write a case paper how to write a thesis how to write the paper in journals and also at times we also educate through the other series the teaching series where we invite a, a lot of guest speakers national guest speakers to give us lectures on various topics so as uh, um, as dr patna has already told um, this is our attempt to uh, i mean uh, stimulate the postgraduate students to come forward writing case reports and writing the journals and how to write their own thesis in the postgraduate uh, studies so this is our aim and uh, we are going on repeating this type of programs uh, since last uh, more than 2 to 3 years and this uh, another series up to starting again from the beginning how to start an abstract then writing a thesis protocol and this is third in the series up to for the, the new postgraduate students those who have joined recently in our uh, uh, curriculum so today's uh, speaker is uh, dr patnaik has told that really it's uh, really fortunate to when i gave him one call he said yes he will be coming so i'm really happy to uh, be have with him today and he will be describing as how to write a case report a really interesting topic this is our panel this is our panel we do organize uh, our advisor dr rajesh babu maji myself coordinator and the, along with me dr santosh mahapatra the co coordinator and of course uh, nothing goes without a mentor mentor our mentor is constantly sees there with us last two and a half or three years really i am very happy to have her with us and always guiding always uh, driving us to host this type of programs and of course uh, always we get the support from the ijoc body the president and the secretary are always with us and uh, they are um, part of all these programs so probably because yesterday only they had a conference at midterm conference at uh, itanagar so they could not join because of the busy in the conference so the yeah, regular moderators we have in our team dr papula maharana and dr natasha das from delhi and bhuvneshwar and another such shift to bhuvneshwar that popular is at delhi they are always constantly moderating our other almost all the topics they are the, our team members and today's uh, speaker as uh, very rightly said is one of the i would say that the uh, genius that the service of sam gupta i heard about him very much from my son dr pravin sudhi always he speaks about him so to say few words about him Uh, he is the founder of Sen Gupta's Research Academy, limited retina surgeon practicing at the Future Vision Eye Care, Mumbai. Currently, associate editor of Indian Journal of Ophthalmology, and 
he had uh, of course he uh, did his diploma from an ophthalmological Zipmer and after that he did DNB from Darwin Pondicherry and he is also a research come clinical fellowship in VR from Shankar Atrala. He had uh, undergone a training, I mean, research fellowship training at Wilmer Institute, John Hopkins, USA. He was awarded the McCartney Prize with the Royal College of Ophthalmologists at London and first ever non British national to receive this award. He received also Dr. G. Venkat Swami gold medal in DNB from the best student in 2009. He has published more than 100 public papers in indexed uh, peer reviewed journals and including the top 2% of global researchers listed by Stanford University. A really interesting thing. And it also the founder of Sen Gupta's Research Academy, one of its kind portal offering e-learning lectures and research methodology and service for manuscript preparation is very wide experience. And I think it's very good, great, great research on the topic. And we are lucky to have him find out at least he has promised us to one hour he said, yes, we'll be finishing at nine o'clock today. So welcome Dr. Sabisa to Sen Gupta to our this study program. Doyle Vishwas is actually a Siddha um, from She is currently uh, the, the cataract refractive surgeon at Susutai Foundation at Research Center, Kolkata. She is the moderator for this program today, this uh, episode, and along with her, the panelist, Dr. Sarmista Behra from uh, uh, Bhimsar Gurla, Dr. Jayant Kumar Das from Asham, Dr. Sujata Das, Sanbhajani Kutna, join because she is, uh, has to take the flight from uh, Hyderabad to Bhuvaneshwar, the flight was delayed, she is not able to join us. Dr. Madhusmita Behra from Kolkata. So, today's poster students being Dr. Arnab Rai from Agrawal Sai Hospital Katak, Dr. Padimna Mishra from Bugla, Dr. Juhi Gupta, Arayo, Kolkata, Dr. Anjali Koyal from Kims, Bhubaneshwar, Dr. Sarikarat, Kims, Bhubaneshwar, Dr. Saranya from Ames, Patna, Dr. Devasis, Ames, Bhubaneshwar, and Jyoti Goyal, LBP, Bhubaneshwar. So, I welcome all the poster students and panelists to this program. So, I request the poster students to keep engrossed with the subject and go on asking questions to the panelists, to the moderators, to the speaker. Then all it will become interesting that we could know that you have learned something to, from today's uh, program. So, with these few words, I welcome everybody. So before I hand over to the uh, moderator of today's program of Doyle Research, a few words I would listen from the, our uh, mentor, Dr. Uh, Chaitra Jaiti. Thank you, sir. And, uh, apologies for the background noise. Uh, glad to be part of the meeting and uh, two very, uh, you know, important people in today's webinar. Of course, uh, one is Sunny. Uh, the amount of knowledge he has about publishing is unbelievable. So he couldn't have a better speaker. And uh, for all you youngsters, a good uh, starting point is writing a case report. And I'm sure uh, he'll be able to tell us a lot about it. And also uh, happy to see Doyle there. Uh, hi, Doyle. Uh, good to be uh, see you as part of the program. And I'm sure it's going to be an interesting uh, webinar ahead. Thank you, sir. Dr. Doyle, now it's your program. Now you start. Uh, then after that, you the them start the program. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, it's an, indeed an honor to moderate a program like this, which is of so much of practical value. And when I read through Dr. Shobhushati's uh, profile, I was like, wow, to be able to moderate a speaker as knowledgeable and as eminent with so much of achievement, it's indeed really an honor. And uh, as you've said, we have only one hour for him to speak, and I think we would really like to hear him. So without much ado, I would request Dr. Shoboshati to please take the stage. Thank you so much, <clears throat> Dr. Kloel and uh, Chaitra and uh, Subudhi, sir. I'll just start sharing. Yeah, I think it's visible now, right? Yes. Green and it's visible. Move this panel out. <clears throat> Okay, so very good evening to one and all. And, uh, you know, I hope a lot of postgraduates are here and, uh, you know, this webinar will be helpful to you in terms of how you get started in, uh, you know, manuscript writing, not just case report writing, you know, and uh, case report is a relatively large umbrella head under which there are many different things like photo essays, uh, you know, like ophthalmic images, which I'll uh, hopefully expose to you. But before we get started, I generally like to start with an inspiration. And today's, uh, you know, I thought I'll put forward this question to you. Uh, you know, even before you start is the questions you ask define who you are and not the answers, you know, 
you're going to keep going through your residency and through your fellowships and then through your uh, you know career and uh, you know you will learn a lot of new things a lot of them you know will be taught to you but then you know the answers that you seek yourself are the ones that you are you will tend to remember for a long time right so keep asking questions i think that's imperative so you know we are here to discuss about case report writing now uh, i think i have already been uh, introduced so i'll skip this slide you know a quick disclaimer is that i really am not an expert at uh, you know case reports or generally in publishing despite whatever you have heard so far so i have been learning this over the last 15 years and i'm still learning and i hope i can you know transfer some of those learnings uh, you know over the next half an hour 45 minutes so some quick rules is i think turn off your microphones because you know it disturbs everyone around so please look at your uh, you know devices and turn it to mute uh, feel free to type your questions in the chat box here or you know on whatever uh, uh, platform that you are in and we'll take a look at that uh, when we finish the presentation uh, and and like i said uh, you know hopefully we'll have a lot of questions uh, in the end so you know this is overall uh, the sort of uh, outlook that i thought we'll discuss with first is we'll learn more about case reports you know why how and other things then we'll take a look at a quick checklist which will help you writing a uh, case report then i'll show you some online software where you can uh, you know which will actually help you write case reports properly uh, with uh, you know with proper headings then you know it's always important to submit it to the right journal of choice so how do you pick the right journal you know a lot of people including a lot of experienced heads keep asking me how do you choose journals that's a very nice tip uh, that will probably be the top tip that we're going to discuss on how you choose a particular journal for your case reports and then uh, you know i'll talk to you a little bit about plagiarism checks i think no uh, you know lecture is complete uh, manuscript writing uh, lecture is complete without going through plagiarism checks so uh, you know before like i said we'll get in integrities of it and i think some people probably are still joining the next clip has actually inspired me for over a decade and it's from a, a bollywood film clip so just take a look and then we'll sketch <laughs> so what is that eagerness in your heart is something that you need to really discover for yourself and you know that really is your calling right uh, you know it could be surgery it could be anything else and for me it really has been clinical research over the last uh, decade and a half so you know sort of the uh, crux of the whole thing is uh, just keep asking questions you know if you ask enough questions you will ask uh, some of the right ones uh you know and then you can pursue them and you know get answers to those questions doing your research so you know we'll get back to uh, the nitty gritties of writing case reports so you know uh, this is a level of scientific evidence that i'm sure you might have seen this pyramid before you know where animal and laboratory studies are right at the bottom case reports are above them then you have case control studies cohort studies and uh, randomized trials which are actually primary studies uh, and then you can collate all of these together and get uh, either a meta analysis or a systematic review so what we are really looking for today is uh, you know what we are looking for today is case reports or case series right so there are other things like editorial spawn point counterpoints etc but overall we are trying to look at case reports so this is at the bottom of the pyramid right uh, however you know remember that as you as and when you graduate and do more case reports think about going up the pyramid you know you have an idea and uh, you know one or two cases is great but try and you know go towards uh, better ideas and uh, doing case studies I think the whole idea has to be to climb up the pyramid, right? So you must go and start doing more and more uh, case control or cohort studies, perhaps even randomized trials. And by the time you finish, you know that pyramid really should reverse. 
uh, not not really like this but you should probably have more randomized trials in prospective studies under your belt uh, somehow some retrospective studies and fewer case reports as you finish you know as you uh, go on and graduate into uh, you know proper clinical research but still case reports are a good way to start uh, you know so you can actually get a lot of success if you start uh, you know doing this right from the beginning of your residency so one mission of this lecture really is to empower you to write unique informative and educational case reports you know remember every word is important that the case report should be unique informative and educational right so we'll uh, see what these really mean uh, you know but before that why to start with case reports right so it's one of the best ways to get started in scholarly writing records uh, a rare event or a manifestation uh, it provides initial data on which randomized trials can be based say it reports rare drug toxicities you know, remember the thalidomide i think somebody is not on mute and it's a bit disturbing so if all of you can be on mute that will be great so reports uh, rare drug toxicities you know remember that thalidomide uh, uh, you know disaster that happened and you know it all came up with few uh, drug toxicities and you know all of that was put and then larger studies actually confirmed those, those occurrences it's of course easy to read short and attracts attention easily uh, and it does not need any analytic statistics, right? So statistics really is the Achilles heel for all of us, right? Most of us are uh, sort of uh, afraid of doing statistics and others. So case reports are, you know, just one or two standalone cases, and they, of course, don't need any statistics. So, uh, you know, how do we get there? How do we get better at this? So it's always good to follow a tried and tested approach. So use a checklist to write your case reports. You know, I'll show you these checklists and, you know, how to get there. You know, so let's look at this approach. Uh, so you need to understand what is this care checklist, then write the paper as per these guidelines, which are there in the care checklist. And then of course, submit to a journal, right? It's relatively sounds easy. So let's understand what this care checklist really means. You know, it comes from uh, something like this. So this is called Equator Reporting Guidelines Decision Tree, which guide which guidelines are relevant for my work. It look, looks a little bit, uh, you know, uh, confusing here, but, you know, let's see what this says. And I'll show you how to get to this checklist online as well. The first question I ask is, was the research on humans? You know, easy answer, right? It's yes. Did your research generate quantitative data? Quantitative means, uh, you know, data from a lot of patients together. Here the answer, of course, is no, because, you know, your check, uh, case report is just one or two standalone cases. Then the next question is, did you pull results of previous studies? That is in the form of a review. Again, the answer is no, right? Then it asks you, do you describe a clinical case or a series of cases? When you say yes, then it comes to the care checklist. And that is a checklist that uh, you need to use. So, you know, I'll show you how to get to these, uh, you know, this uh, care checklist. Just one second. You know, so uh, we'll go to the equator network dot equator one second equator dash network dot org. You know, this is the website that you go to, and when you click enter, <clears throat> then this is the page that you come up to. Okay, equator network enhancing the quality and transparency of health research. So, reporting guidelines for many study types are given here. So randomized trials, the reporting guideline to be used is uh, consort. Observational study, it's strobe. Systematic reviews is prisma. You know, so when you look at this case reports, it says care, right? That's what I've been talking about here. You know, so you click the care and you know this is what it is available. It's uh, available and in PDF and you can just clearly download. Suppose you're not only looking for case reports. You want to write your thesis or you know you want to write some other papers. You can go to toolkit scene because there are so many checklists. It's sometimes, sometimes uh, quite you know, difficult to uh, actually go through that flow chart. So you can go to toolkits and you can say uh, selecting the appropriate reporting guideline. Right. So when you click that, this is what comes up. You know, this is what I have already shown you. However, suppose this is a bit too daunting for you to do. You can just go down and you can click this. This free tool will help you work out which reporting guidelines is right for you. That's so when you click this, this is what comes out. You know, what are you writing? Suppose, uh, you know, there are a lot of things here, a uh, lot of different questions. Suppose that is also daunting for you. So you scroll down and it says, find the right reporting checklist to help you plan, write or review medical research, right? Just say start. First question is, what type of article is it? You know, suppose you are writing original research, uh, you click that. Suppose you are writing protocol methods, systematic reviews. So here is clinical case report, right? You just check this and just say submit and it will then take you to the care checklist. Right? It will say just go to the checklist and it will go to the care checklist. You can complete it or you can download that checklist. Right? So this is basically the care checklist and this is the best way to actually 
uh, you know, go about writing. Now, what is this checklist, right? Uh, let me quickly show you. So this is actual, this is the actual checklist, you know, so there are about 13 items in this, and these are non-negotiable. All your case reports or whatever you are writing have to have something or the other about each of these. You know, let's see what this is. Title, uh, item number one is about title. It says the diagnosis or intervention of primary focus followed by the word checklist. Right. Uh, just one second. Followed by the word case report. Sorry. Followed by the word case report. Then keywords. Uh, number two is two to five keywords that identify diagnosis or interventions. Three A is about introduction. And we don't have time to go through all of these. I urge you to take a look at some of these. You know, then it talks about introduction. Then it talks about patient information. Five A B C D. Uh, six talks about clinical findings. Seven about timelines. Eight about you know eight A B C D talks about diagnostics and assessments. Uh, you know, this is applicable not only to ophthalmology, but, you know, to anybody wanting to write any, uh, you know, any uh, case report. So this is very, very practical approach by way of writing, you know. So if you write one or two sentences about each of these, uh, you know, say uh, 5A talks about de-identified patient specific information. 5B talks about primary concerns and symptoms of the patient. This is obviously going to be part of what you're writing, right? But then if you write one or two sentences about each, your whole, uh, you know, your whole case report is ready. So, you know, uh, so that's a care check checklist you can use to write your case reports. Now, uh, you know, uh, an entire case essentially goes through this roadmap over line or over, over a you know, period of days or months or sometimes years. And these, these are the timelines, right? So initially patient will have uh, some symptoms and others. Then you uh, talk about relevant past history, if at all. Then there comes the current illness, right? That past history is obviously something that is influencing this. Then you talk about current illness, physical examination and diagnostics, and then you come to a diagnosis. Then you have initial treatments if required. Then you have ongoing interventions and follow-ups, maybe or two or three times, and then there is a final follow-up, right? So this is essentially how any case, not only for a case report, but in your clinics goes through this, right? And, you know, uh, so when you're talking about all of these put together, it constitutes a checklist. Uh, sorry, it constitutes a case report, I'm sorry. Uh, but however, suppose you, you know, what you're going to report uh, is only about, you know, or what is meaningful is only about this diagnostic method that you have used. You know, say you have used something, uh, you know, very different to diagnose the patient when, it, oh, sorry, if you, uh, you know, so that is something that uh, can alone, alone be reported as well. Uh, 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 yes, then you can, you know, so how you came to a diagnosis that can be alone reported. If you want to report the whole treatment alone without reporting, you know, a lot of details of how you came to the diagnosis, you can only talk about or concentrate about your initial treatments, etc. Right. So there are different parts of this that you can even think about reporting individually instead of, you know, writing the whole thing all over again. Uh, so this is, uh, you know, this is what I have used in, uh, you know, when I was a resident where, you know, date wise, whenever you're looking at a case sheet, you uh, record the date, then you record the summary of the initial and follow up visits, right? What happened exactly at that time? What diagnostic test was done? Any imaging was done? And you go and retrieve that imaging uh, from your OCT machine or fundus photo or whatever. And then what intervention was done at that time, right? So at each uh, and every stage date wise, you first make uh, you know, a large document uh, stating, you know, what the patient came with, uh, what test was done, and what intervention was done, right? Uh, then there is this Pearson's conceptual scheme. Now you have all the data with you. You want to make everything into something which is interesting. You know, so what journal editors really look for is there should be good documentation, educational value, uniqueness, objectivity, and interpretation, right? So this is uh, now you have all that raw data. You want to convert it into a case report. These are some of the things that you should be aware of. So, you know, go beyond or stop before that is use this roadmap. Let me give you an example and always think about how much material is required. Is the whole thing required? And the diagnosis is what was interesting. The treatment is same like any other case, right? So is that important to report? Uh, not really, right? So suppose you're only looking for physical examination and other diagnostic methods that, uh, you know, constitutes an ophthalmic image. You're, you know, cutting out everything else, but you're only concentrating on that one or two images, right? Which are, uh, you know, uh, of, of interest to you. Uh, you know, so this is an example of an ophthalmic uh, image that uh, I uh, happened to publish in JAMA Ophthalmology. In JAMA Ophthalmology, it is called Ophthalmic Images. You know, so this was a combined branch retinal artery and branch retinal vein occlusion and hyperhomocysteinemia. You now, this is what was done. You know, so we, I, I only report, so, you know, this is what was reported. A healthy man in his late 30s experienced sudden loss of vision. Uh, and presented an extremely rare combination of BREO and BRVO, his homocysteine was 52. That's really high levels, you know. That's about it, right? So you just written, it's like a figure legend, right? So you just reported two sentences and you've got published in JAMA Ophthalmology, isn't it? That's a journal which is very hard to, to get. You know, so instead of writing a whole 
uh, you know, a thousand or fifteen hundred page, uh, you know, sort of write up. What we did is identified that what is interesting here is just the diagnosis, right? Just that image. So you know, it was accepted as an ophthalmic image. Suppose you want to go more. You know, you want to talk about uh, examination and how the diagnosis was done. Maybe there was a differential diagnosis in others. So that constitutes more, right? So it's a photo essay. You know, so where you put more information into that. So it will be slightly longer, right? It will not be 30, 40 words. It probably will be 200 to 300 words. But then, you know, you probably don't want to report that initial treatment and other follow-ups. So, uh, you know, this is a photo essay. Uh, you, so you can go beyond, yeah, you know, you can uh, pull multiple cases together, increase its credibility, strength of association. Uh, you know, you can get into better journals. So when you have five or more together, you know what we uh, th then you can pull them and get into an original article uh, so you know this is a case series which is on vitiligo iridis and glaucoma which is a rare sequelae of smallpox which was published in the journal i again slightly difficult to uh, you know get into as you can clearly see this glaucomatous disc right so this was a series of uh, i think five cases right so put uh, you know cases together and then uh, you know a lot of the times that causality is uh, you know is not established right so we saw these spots on the iris it, it looks like these vitiligo spots and there was glaucoma and and you know this, this was the first patient who had these smallpox scars on his face but we didn't know whether smallpox is responsible for this so you know you wait and then you might see more cases like that right so maybe over a year or a couple of years you may see more cases and then you can actually talk about causality so whenever you're talking about causality you know this caused that you know say uh covid vaccine caused optic neuritis or whatever uh remember that that one case is always could be coincidental right so if you have two or three cases and uh, that is obviously more meaningful Right. Uh, and if there are six or more cases, then you can actually go ahead and write a uh, original article as well. Uh, you know, so uh, that first report I published on combined branch and ret uh, retinal vein and retinal artery occlusion, but then I happened to see six more cases after that. And so we put them all together and made a uh, original article out of that. So, you know, sometimes these can even get into original articles. Uh, you know, this is more about that. Uh, there's an other original article which was about eight cases of bacillus serious endophthalmitis after cataract surgery. So this organism is common in uh, you know post traumatic, but not in post cataract endophthalmitis. So it was published actually in ophthalmology, and that's the biggest journal that we have. So this is acute post operative bacillus serious endophthalmitis mimicking toxic anterior syndrome, uh, anterior segment syndrome, or TAS. That is because it happened within you know 12 or 13 hours of surgery, and it was very devastating. You know, this is more about, uh, you know, individual cases. There were 10 cases, uh, other things. So, uh, you know, so this is how you can identify whether you want to only choose that image or you want to write more about it uh, and make it into a photo essay. Uh, still, it is imaging based uh, or you can write more uh, and make it a case report. And if you have multiple cases, make it a case series, you know, and if you have uh, six or more cases, then they can actually also become a uh, original article. Right. So that is how you can choose amongst, uh, you know, how you want to go about this uh, image quality is really important. It's crucial to acquire high resolution images. You know, even if you're using your phone, nowadays phones have very high resolution settings. Uh, you must keep it to the highest resolution before you actually take an image. Uh, it should be at least 300 DPI resolution. Uh, smartphone documentation, like I said, is also possible, but don't miss this documentation. There's an example of a patient who had sub sub conjunctival cystic sarcosis. You know, so it was actually a cyst which was protruding uh, outside and then, you know, by the time the person actually went to examine this, it popped out and fell on, on the slit lamp. You know, and this is what it looked like. So this, I've just blown it up to show you that, you know, this is a, so if you see, this is not really a very high resolution image yet. It was again published in JAMA ophthalmology as an ophthalmic image. Right. So your devices now are much, uh, you know, so uh, much high resolution. So don't miss the chance. If you see something like this, please uh, click images and with the consent of the patient. This is an example of a rejection letter for uh, you know uh, a case report that was uh, sent. Right? It asks. It says there is no fundus or ultrasound pics have been provided with the manuscript. This is about uh, endophthalmitis. It it is not clear whether the patient underwent vitrectomy or a vitreous tap. There is no mention of final visual acuity duration for which antifungal drugs were given, etc. You know. So this is one of the earliest cases which uh, talked about fungal endophthalmitis in COVID-19. We know that that happened slightly more frequently, but then, you know, this could have been the first report that was published, but it was rejected because the person who was submitting was in a hurry and, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, information was missing. So, uh, you know, so like this case, it was a case report, but then a lot of that treatments and other things were not given, right? So uh, it was rejected overall. So remember that the documentation at each visit, what happened, uh, you know, what imaging was done, what treatment was done should definitely be part of your submissions. So the roadmap for a case report is, is use that care checklist, 
use, uh, you know, identify that roadmap and identify that type of submission you want to do. Then acquire images and have great documentation. And remember that Im images should be of high resolution. And then you can compile your case report or a photo essay or ophthalmic image, whatever you might want to do. Remember that it must be unique and educational. So, yeah, these are two things that we've already seen where, you know, we, I talked to you about the uh, care checklist that you all must explore. And then, uh, you know, I uh, told you, I showed you some examples of how you can choose one from the other. Now I'll show you some online software that you can actually use to write. There's some online software. I'll use this care writer app. I think this is getting recorded. So you'll probably get, you know, so you need to log in using your, uh, you know, using your Google ID or something like that. And then you just, you can go to new case. Uh, you know, it'll talk about working title and keywords. So I have uh, something that I have uh, going to use. So it, this, this is a case report that is already published and it talks about diagnosis or intervention of primary focus for, you know, uh, sorry, uh, this is the title. It talks about retain intraocular foreign body by presenting uh, as acute retinal necrosis, you know, so let us copy this. I'm just showing you how the software works. It says working title then it wants case uh, keywords. And these are some keywords, acute retinal necrosis, intraocular foreign body, penetrating trauma. You know, we'll, then it says next, uh, you know, send uh, invitation to your co-authors. Let's keep this for now. You know, so <clears throat> these are the authors. This is the abstract. You know, so I'm just going to uh, copy paste what was uh, done. So this is just an example, you know, we are not really going into what this case was in others. I'm sure just showing you an example of how this software works, right? So go and just copy paste it. You know, then you can copy paste the introduction, narrative, uh, discussion, etc. Let's do go and do that. Uh, you know, so this talks about uh, the case report, etc. So I'm just going to copy paste some of this. So I have copied this. I'm just going to paste it. Okay. And you know, you then go ahead and paste the discussion, the conclusion, the acknowledgements, etc. You can add authors, you know, you can do all of these. I think you need to uh, enter all of these. And then when you say generate, I think it's uh, one second. Uh, yeah, then when you say download, you know, it will create a PDF for you. And this is how it will come up as. So this says care writer, you know, this is just for you to understand how these some sometimes these tools work, right? So talk about it talks about introduction, you know, whatever you copy pasted, it's going to come. But the important one second. Yeah, so Yeah, so the, you know what the important thing is that uh, you know you must not forget to uh, submit an abstract. You must write the introduction. Uh, you know then you know this is all based on the care checklist, right? So what was the narrative? What was the patient's perspective, if necessary? And then discussion and uh, you know conclusion. So don't miss this, miss these things. Sometimes we enter, uh, you we submit a case report without a conclusion. So this will make you think about what is the conclusion that you want to convey. You know the discussion and uh, sometimes the patient's perspective. Uh, narrative means what happened at each follow up and you know how how things responded so this is something that you can actually think about using this is the uh, you know this is the care writer app uh, there is also this american journal of ophthalmology case report software which you can uh, you know also try and explore but the care writer app is actually quite helpful uh, then the you know journal of choices uh, where what how you know which uh, which journals take case reports now i don't know how to you know i have a great case but i don't know where to submit this so remember that a lot of these top journals actually take case reports. Uh, you know that's because it, you know, that readability of that journal becomes very high, right? There's uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, you know, uh, let me call it even emotion. A lot of emotion attached to case reports. You know where editors actually like a lot of case reports because it draws in the audience. You know, and once they read case report, they say, oh, this journal is great. Let me see what else it publishes. You know, so even top journals like New England Journal of Medicine, which has a very high impact factor, uh, that also publishes case reports. Let me let me show you an example. You know, so this is the New England Journal of Medicine and you know, there they call it image challenge. You know, they don't call it case report or ophthalmic image. They uh, call it image challenge. And you know, this is the image which is published as recently as 2020. I've also seen in, uh, one in 2021, which looked at OCT angiography of a very large neovascularization of the disc. 
uh, using a wide field OCT angiography that was in 2022. Now, this is something that a lot of vitreoretinal surgeons see all the time, right? So, this is a emulsified silicon oil in the anterior, uh, in the anterior chamber, and this is a uh, you know, an inverse hypopion. So, this is something that we see regularly, but imagine that is published in the New England Journal of Medicine, right? So, uh, you know, a lot of these journals do publish, say, you know, Lancet publishes. Let me talk about JAMA ophthalmology. You know, they call it ophthalmic image. You know, so I'll just show you. <clears throat> these are ophthalmic images. This is a list. Then 2023, morning glory syndrome with Bergmaster papilla and retinal detachment. You know, that is, you know, it's not very common, but then, you know, a lot of us do tend to see morning glory with Bergmaster's papilla, right? So let me try and see, you know, how, whether we can see that free or not. Yeah, so, you know, so generally you need to pay for this, but uh, which we'll just skip, you know, but then let's look sil silicon oil droplet over the optic nerve head after intravitreal injection. And obviously this is rare, you know, that therefore it's got published in JAMA ophthalmology, uh, say non-invasive blue light channel imaging of retinal non-perfusion and vein occlusion. You know, so things like this. So uh, it's not like that these top journals don't take case reports. They just call them differently. You know, they don't call it a case report. So JAMA ophthalmology calls it, calls it an ophthalmic image. Ophthalmology journal, it calls it pictures and perspectives. You know, they don't cause so when you go and try to submit, you will see, oh, case report hai nahi, kya kare? But then it is called pictures and perspectives. You know, so that's what it is called. So of course, there are subspeciality journals like retinal cases and brief, brief reports, orbit, cornea, etc., which actually do take uh case reports uh, as such then of course there are special subspeciality journals now like AGO case reports, BMJ case reports, of course, IGO case reports is also now there, right? So some of these top journals do take, but then remember that they are looking at only some part of that whole roadmap, either an image or a perspective or, you know, something like that, where it is very concise uh, and yet they do publish. Most of them are published online only, right? So whenever you're looking at uh, journals, you know, think about whether you can get into some of the top journals, but uh, with a much shorter, uh, you know, write up, which is beneficial to you as well. Right. And like I said, this is some one of the some of the top tips that I'll discuss now is how do you actually choose that journal? Right. This, it's all right that you, you've shown any JM and JAMA ophthalmology, but I don't think my, you know, the my case report has that much uh, to get into these top journals. Then how do I choose that journal? So there are something called journal matchers, which are provided by, you know, many. So these are some of the journal matchers. So these are artificial intelligence based uh, matches which are working at the back end. So I'll show you some examples. This is Elsevier Journal Finder. You know, so again, you'll have to, uh, you know, sign in using your uh, Google or something like that. What it asks you is two things, paper title and paper abstract. You know, so again, uh, this, this one will use, uh, you know, so this is retained intraocular for an iron foreign body presenting as acute retinal necrosis. We'll just copy and, uh, you know, this is the title. We'll just paste it here. And then uh, it needs the abstract, right? So you need to, of course, write the abstract. And uh, I'm just copy pasting this abstract, right? And when I do that, you know, this is ready. It says find journals. Remember, this is provided by Elsevier, which is a very large publisher. So it is going to give you journals only published by Elsevier. But when you write find journals, of course, it says this article was already published in any journal of ophthalmology. Right. But it will also show you many other journals which you could get into, like American Journal of Ophthalmology, Case Reports, Saudi Journal of Ophthalmology. Uh, it shows, uh, you know, the site score and sometimes impact factors. Journal of American Academy of Pediatric Ophthalmology and Strabismus. It has open access fees of $3,000. Journal of Pediatric Surgery sometimes could take this. You know, International Journal of Pediatric Otolaryngology, uh, you know, could also take, uh, take this. So it also shows you text match score. This is a relatively low score, but still, you know, you're actually getting contact lens and anterior eye, you know, so, and whether they are open access, if at all, uh, that is also shown, you know, so subscription, there is no publishing charge. So, uh, you know, most of the times we will not go into open access, but we'll just sub submit it as a routine, right? So there are some examples from Elsevier. Uh, there are more examples. So, uh, you know, nature, so nature is another very large publishing house, which also gives, <coughs> you know, the same thing. So here you need to enter the title and the uh, manuscript text, or, you know, this is just the abstract. And again, let me enter the title. So I'm just entering the title here. So this is all, act, you know, working real time, right? Subject area. Uh, so you need to scroll down and say medicine and public health. You know, you can actually take a look. So we'll just, this is for an example, suggest journals. 
So it says Journal of Ophthalmic Inflammation and Infection, BMC Ophthalmology, International Journal of Retin and Vitreous, International Ophthalmology. You know, so a lot of the journals you may not have heard about also, right? When you are, especially when you are a resident, we don't really know how many journals there are out there. So <clears throat> it shows impact factor and other things, document ophthalmology, Indian Journal uh, Photolaryngology. You know, so remember this is published by Nature only. So Nature Group, whatever they're publishing, they'll give you these examples. So in uh, Journal of Medical Case Reports Extra. Right. So there are some journal matches which you can use. The Web of Science is also there, which also, uh, you know, this is a little bit slow website. Let me try and see whether it works. You know, so here it is, right? So have uh, a manuscript match. So it asks to log in. Uh, so when you log in, log in again, uh, yeah, so you know you basically just uh, let me try and do this if it happens quickly so it's going to sign you in and then it's going to yeah again the same thing right the tag title and the abstract so the title i already have here and abstract i'm just going to uh you know, just copy paste it again the web of science is really you know it has many many it is not publisher specific and it has a lot of uh, you know, journals under it. So let's say find journals. So it's just going to take a little time and then it's going to again show you a list that right? it talks about a journal called medicine, which you're not really sure. It shows you a match score. It's, it's a high match score. Journal of Clinical Medicine, International Journal of Clinical Experimental Medicine. See, it shows Indian Journal of Ophthalmology, right? So um, any match score of 0 0.1 and more is, is a good match. International Ophthalmology, Experimental Therapeutic Medicine, you know, some that we sometimes don't even know, graphics, archives, you know, clinical ophthalmology, these are open access journals, etc. Right. So, uh, so there you go, you know, so you'll get a, at least a list of at least seven, eight, 10 journals that you could think about. And then you can look at some of these journals and see, you know, what you want to submit and where. Remember that some of these journals could be predatory journals. Uh, you know, this is, uh, I'll show you a quick, uh, so this is my website on Sanguta Research Academy, which has a blog on predatory journals. Hopefully it should open up. Mm. Anyway, till it opens, uh, you know, we'll uh, get to it. So predatory journal really mean they are rogue journals with rogue publishers and they are really exploitative. They have relatively high fees uh, for publishing and they do not check content validity and authenticity. You know, so they'll probably give you our acceptance in three days, but then they'll say you have to, uh, you know, submit, uh, you have to give us $3,000, but then you've already signed that copyright transfer form. Now, what do you do? You know, you're in a fix. So always look at some of these uh, recommendations from these sites and look whether it's a predatory journal or not. Right. So all predatory journals are open access, but all open access journals are not predatory. Right. So look at uh, some of this. So what you really need to ask yourself is, uh, is this an open access journal with an article processing fees? Uh, who are the editor and the board editorial board? Are they credible enough? Uh, is it an official publication of a society or a body like AIOS? Is it peer reviewed? Is it indexed in PubMed? Uh, who is the publisher? Does it have at least four issues per year? You know, sometimes these journals sound too good to be true and they are a lot of the times predatory. So, uh, you know, so uh, like I said, there is a blog on my website. I, hopefully it has opened up. Unfortunately, it hasn't. But anyway, so, you know, so you look at predatory journals. Uh, also, you must avoid uh, play, plagiarism, right? So there is again a blog on my website on plagiarism. And, you know, you can look at, uh, you know, what you can do to avoid it and what are the softwares that uh, journals use to you know identify plagiarism but please make sure that you do not copy paste purposefully right because you will be caught so you know this is where we started off where we looked at case reports and more about them uh, you know and whether you can make it into smaller items and get into better journals like ophthalmic images or perspectives or uh, you know photo essays uh, remember different journals call them differently, but most top journals do take these. Then I showed you the care checklist itself. Then I showed you some online softwares like that care writer app, then the journal of choice, uh, using these, uh, you know, matchers and then avoid predators, uh, the predatory journals, and then definitely don't miss plagiarism checks. Right. So overall in summary, be confident while writing a case report, identify a unique case document, uh, documentation is the key, you know, so if you miss that image. Uh, at that point of time, you know, it's really loss. And remember to click or acquire high resolution images, uh, then timely complete the write-up, use the checklist. So here you use the care checklist and these online tools like the care writer, submit to a journal. So choose a journal 
uh, based on these recommendations from some of these matchers, then see instructions for authors and word count, submit online, and you know, of course, guard against plagiarism. Uh, go beyond case reports, watch out for repeated cases if they happen, and then make it a series or even an original article if possible. Uh, you must progress in research, you know, that is something that must drive you. So you must end up with more original articles later on. Keep writing case reports, but then, uh, you know, avoid the urge to write letter to editors. And we won't go into too much into details of those. No, but then keep writing case reports, but always think about write, doing more, right? So put more cases together uh, and try and always write original articles. So impossible is nothing. Uh, you know, you can explore some of the courses on my website. So this is uh, Sengupta's Research Academy. Uh, so these are the blogs, some of which I was trying to show you. There are some e-learning courses and an online fellowship course. There's some of the lectures that, uh, you know, writing case reports is something that I probably, uh, I talk to you now. And there are many things that you can, uh, you know, learn from this course on literature review on actually writing different kinds of manuscripts, how to deal with rejections. Uh, you know, this is a, uh, I think a very important uh, module on biostatistics where we look at, you know, simple things like making an Excel sheet to how do you do descriptive statistics, uh, how do you communicate with the biostatistician and other things. And, uh, and this is a more longer one month fellowship if some of you are interested. There are many, uh, you know, interesting blogs like p-values, uh, regression analysis, sample size calculations, how do you convert your thesis to a journal article, and this may interest some of you as residents. And, you know, there are many students, actually, now there are more than 5,000 students enrolled in these courses from about 90 countries. So, you know, please feel free to explore some of these courses and see if some of them interest you. This is uh, our, our Facebook group where about uh, 2,500 people who, as members. It's ophthalmic research and collaborations in India. You know, so if you're looking to do collaborative research, you can actually go in and, you know, explore some opportunities there. Uh, these are some of the workshops that uh, me and my research academy have conducted over a period of uh, about a couple of years now. You know, so if you see this is, this is case report writing, but then we've done a lot of other things, including innovations, uh, some statistics and other things. And a lot of people have attended. Uh, then, you know, we are continuing to do and repeat some of these. So case report writing obviously is one of them. Paper writing, how to read a paper, sample size calculation, biostatistics, etc. So, you know, so if you, you can follow Sengupta Research Academy on Facebook, uh, or you can follow me on some of the handles and you know see when these are getting announced and then you can actually join them uh, so that is what i wanted to sort of you know present to you about case report writing and remember that the case report is not just one entity but there are so many you know different uh, sort of things under the case report so think about which one you want to do and always aim for a higher journal uh, you know and then uh, use that checklist to to you know write the best report possible so i'm happy to take questions now or, or later Dial, you're muted. Dial, you're muted. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, as I was saying, that was a brilliant presentation. However, listening to it, I was acutely made aware of my age. I mean, I didn't even know that you have apps these days that help you write uh, your case report. You have websites, you have Facebook groups. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I still belong to that dinosaur generation where if you have to write anything, you take out a pen and a paper and you take out the case histories and you go through them and you write down stuff. But this was really an eye opener. And uh, before we take up the discussion with all the young people, young students who are here, uh, I would like to ask the panelists to come in and give their comments. So, Dr. Sharmishta. Yeah, it was same with me. It's uh, I was awestruck listening to him, mesmerized by his talks, and I didn't know. By the time I was having a doubt, there was another doubt in row, and I could not really remember them all. But I have asked uh, Dr. Sen Gupta maybe in the chat box uh, about uh, the what is. Uh, let him tell a little bit more about math score. Yeah, so actually, you know, the match score really means, you know, that so many, uh, uh, you know, uh, these match matching websites are giving you so many options, 10, 15, 20 options. So which is, you know, how are they being ranked? Which one is coming first, which coming, which one is coming second? So that what they use is something called the site score or the match score, where, you know, it is telling us which is the journal which matches closest to your 
uh, manuscript. However, then, uh, you know, so that uh, one which is on the top will have the highest match score or site score. But then, uh, you know, not necessarily we are going to go with the number one choice, right? You know, say it's an absolute ophthalmic uh, case, but then uh, you don't want to submit it to a medicine journal or, you know, an otolaryngology journal, for example. So you probably would want to look at the first ophthalmic journal, which is coming uh, on that. So but remember that, you know, that site score, if it's a, the ophthalmic journal is ranked seventh and it has a site score of say 0 0.1 or 0 0.12, that means even if it is showing that, you know, it's less likely to take your paper, right? It's less likely to be interested in your paper. Mm -hmm. So that's really, so match score really means they are being transparent and showing you how we are ranking this from one to 10 or one to 20. That's pretty much how it is. Yeah, and uh, one more thing I would like to mention is like uh, it's, it's, you said a very good point that uh, five becomes a case series and when it is six, it can uh, be taken over as an original article. We always had an idea. I don't know how we got this. Uh, we always had an idea 30 cases or more would become an original article. But right. uh, today's learning for me was six cases can also be an original article. Right. Thank you so much. It was a fabulous talk. Thank and you. we would like to listen more of you. Dr. Joranto and Dr. Madhumita. Yeah. You... Uh, I would uh, say it's a very good presentation. By him. It's very much informative. Uh, I got to know so many things. Hmm. And I would like to ask Dr. Savya Sachi regarding how do we uh, got to know about the quality of a case report? As of I know, some criteria with there. Uh, from there, we used to say the quality of the case report. See, one is, you know, like I said, that, that uh, conceptual scheme is there, but essentially it has to be unique, right? First thing and foremost is it has to be uh, relatively unique, relatively. You know, so the top journal will say it is already there are two reports and I'm not interested. But then a little lower journal will say, oh, there are only 10 reports. Maybe I am interested. So how unique it is, is something that you need to uh, decide for yourself based on a good literature review, isn't it? Once you decide it's a unique enough for uh, you know, this or that journal, then uh, the second thing is how well it is written. You know, that is how uh, it is sent for review or not. Because the editors and others are not going to just take it on face value, isn't it? So you may say unique, but then... You know, the editor will say, oh, there are already three cases. I'm not interested that, you know, something like that. So first thing you need to decide is whether it's unique, whether there is good documentation and whether you can actually convey the point and convince somebody that, you know, what I'm saying makes sense and, you know, why it is important and, you know, how we did things. Uh, once that goes through, you know, a lot of people call it the M test, you know, or, or the moron test, where you ask some very junior person to read that and, you know, ask them, you know, what do you make of this? And, uh, you know, they should also be able to make uh, you know, some, some sense of what you've written, you know, that means that you pass that test and, uh, you know, that means it is relatively unique. It's relatively well written. I'm using this word relatively because you know, it means differently to different people. And as you graduate on to more writing more and more, you know, that, that, uh, skill will improve, but it's relatively unique. It's well written using checklists. You haven't missed anything major and you have good documentation. Once that is in place, you know, then you really have to let the journal decide, you know, whether it's enough for them or not. Dr. Swagbosha, I am Dr. Das here. Yeah, please tell me. Yeah. So to encourage our young people, that are lots of people, they are not want to participate in scientific forum. They want to go to the practice and those are in a private practitioners. What are, uh, what should we, we should do from our society to, to encourage them? to encourage some young stars or even some those are even in practice. You know, so, Can we do something for that uh, our members, other members, general members, those yes, are not interested for you know, I think yeah I think people yeah. need to understand the value of this. You know what's in it. See people who are uh, hardcore into practice see value in money, isn't it? They see value in revenue, how much they're generating over a year's time. And then, uh, you know, how this can influence that, isn't it? How this can add to my practice or how it can add to what my goals are. So yeah. how they can align uh, writing case reports and others with their own goals is something that, you know, everybody has to identify for their own selves. 
Yeah. But then, you know, there are so many things that you can do by writing good papers. You know, if you want revenue, you can generate that. If you want fame recognition, you can generate that. You know, you, you can channelize it to so many different things and in so many different directions. So then, uh, you know, so I we can have a whole lecture on that, on some commercial aspects of research and how somebody can earn four lakhs, five lakhs a month just doing this, not seeing a single patient. You can actually earn that much money in a month. Uh, you know, so that is something that will immediately align everybody, isn't it? Oh, I can also do this. Me better, better, I can also do this. You know, then that perspective changes. So you need to first identify, you know, what are people aligned towards more and how you can channelize this into that alignment. Instead of asking them to change their mindsets and do this, you need to show them the value of this, isn't it? Yeah, I definitely. I don't have time. I don't have the time. I am, you know, once they see the value, then they need to get some basic training, which all your, you know, these talks and others can help. But if they are not seeing the value of it at all, then I think that's a futile exercise. So think about how you can align your membership and uh, you know, show them the value of these things. In that includes residents. You know, so uh, what is in it? What is in it for me? So I have a lecture on my website which talks about what is in it for me. Why should I do research? What's in it for me? I have a web. I have a YouTube talk on commercial aspects of research where I talk about eight and nine different ways of earning money by writing papers. Trust me, there is there is a lot of change happening, a lot of artificial intelligence coming in. And, you know, those organizations are looking at doctors which will validate their AI. You know, everybody needs it. Once we start using it, we will be outdated. But then doctors mm-hmm. who can validate their AI will be the ones in demand. And you can easily think for yourselves. Who have the ability to validate is the ones who have the analytic minds. They are the ones who are actually writing papers, isn't it? The whole world is running behind doctors who are writing papers in the US and trust me in three, four years, that is going to be in India as well. So that, is one, that is just one example I gave you now. And I think that alone is enough for residents to align with, with uh, these things and for even practitioners to align with it. Uh, Dr. Sen, I think a lot of the discussants have already given their questions. Yeah. Uh, can you read them? If- yeah, so there are some direct, yeah, direct questions to me. Let me just say, so can you please explain a little more on open access and subscription? Yeah, so I have a whole lecture on this as well. So open access really means, uh, you know, so when something is getting uh, submitted to a journal, of, there is a website and then there, it's getting into print, there are costs associated with all that, isn't it? So people who are maintaining the websites, uh, you know, people who are uh, actually printing and all that. So somebody has to pay for that. Right. So who pays for that is what this really means. So if the author is paying for this, then it is free for the readership. People can read it without any payment. So that is called open access, where the author pays something called the article processing charges or APC. uh, And that can vary from somewhere around thousand dollars to somewhere around ten thousand dollars as well. When the author pays that fees and then it becomes open access, that is it is free for anyone to read. But then if the author is not paying and person who is actually reading it has to pay for it, that's the subscription model. You know, that's the, that's the traditional model. So that is essentially what the difference is. Okay. Then there is something about match score. I think I already talked about this. Then next question is, can you please say a little bit about match score? I think Dr. Sharmisht has asked this. I've already talked about this. Next question is, as I want to write a case report, I really want to understand what are these and their significance while submitting the report. Uh, you know, I, I think the whole talk was about this, right? What are these? So these are unique presentation cases that you want to actually, you know, tell the world about so that, you know, people improve overall. And then, you know, what is the significance while submitting the report? You know, so what does it mean to you? Uh, I think I think just now I talked about how you, you have to understand how you, you can utilize it for your own goals, isn't it? So I think, I think that answers most of it. Next question is, please suggest a few online softwares for plagiarism checking. So plagiarism, uh, let me just share uh, my screen. So I have a blog I have opened. Yeah. So this is uh, play about plagiarism in medical journals. What you should know, you know, so I think this image I showed you. So when you go through it, you will get a lot of information about, uh, you know, something called retraction watch and others. So how journals trace plagiarism? I think this is what is most important. And what we use is a software called authenticate, you know, IGO uses. And so this is authenticate. So uh, this is uh, provided by the publisher themselves. So authenticate is probably the best and the most, uh, 
and i'll stop this here so authenticate is probably the best software that is out there though it is a paid software but then you know if it's if you have institutional access you could you could use that there is another cheaper version called grammarly now grammarly helps you not only in writing and in improving your english uh, prose and language it will it will get assimilated with your word document you know with your word processor as well uh, and grammarly also has uh, an option for plagiarism checking which is also pretty you know it's all right but then it still misses a lot of lot of uh, things but then authenticate is pretty much the uh, you know the most important uh, thing and there are certain free versions of that on the authenticate home page uh, that is called turn it uh, you know uh, I, I i you know i have closed that thing but you can go on the authenticate and uh, you know you can get uh, one free version which is i think available you can use it for four or five uh plagiarism checks so for your own you know, so over a year if you're writing three or four it's pretty good enough and then it expires after a year right so you can use authenticate that is what most journals use right if authenticate uh says there is not much plagiarism it gives you a uh you know a percentage score of how close it is to uh you know what is published before nobody gets a zero percent score you know a, a article which is without plagiarism uh anywhere between five and twenty percent match with what are what is out there and something which is 40 50% similar to what is out there is really you know what journals then look down upon okay selection of journal for original article any other artificial intelligence software i already showed you right they are all ai software so i don't think we need to go over uh, this can you explain about photo essays like i said you know photo essays is not really the whole mahabharat of that case but it is only that interesting aspect of the case that you think will make it unique so you need to understand for it yourself uh, you know uh, yourself sort of do a literature search and see you know if something like this is there let's say for example we looked at caterpillar hair from caterpillars which go into the uh, eye and we looked at cases which go into the posterior segment alone and that is interesting enough you know so because we had a large series of about i think 30 cases or so but uh, overall you can look at some something like that right so you don't have to talk all, everything about caterpillar hair and this and that if you have a good photo of a hair which is striking out of the retina with some chorioretinitis around it that's pretty much it right so that one image can become an ophthalmic image but then you know if you want to talk about i did a ubm and uh, you know i found more hair in the past plana and things like that then it becomes slightly more you have more than one image you know say so have three or four images then that becomes a photo essay so photo essay or ophthalmic image are really sub parts of an interesting case that you could think about submitting so i think i have exhausted the questions which are uh, there on the chat box okay good evening can uh, dr natasha das would you like to say something dr natasha are you there dr natasha okay um, yeah I think uh, Dr. Sabir Sachi has pretty much covered everything and answered all the questions. So uh, I think that's about it. Uh, care guidelines is the guidelines to follow, and that's uh, how almost everybody writes a case report these days, right? And he's also interestingly told us about the photo essays and uh, other kinds of uh, case reports, unique case presentations, which is really helpful. for um, you know people who are just starting off uh, in writing wonderful presentation dr sarasachi right any other post graduate students would like to say something dr sarika jyoti yes like? yes doctor uh, good evening dr sarasachi i had a very basic questions to ask uh, number one like uh, what i encountered is like if we have a case and we have a very detailed uh, everything uh, like images and detail details of all that case and i want to publish that as a case report but i prospectively check and we have a similar cases like say for drug toxicity but uh, in those prospectively when i see those cases we don't have a very good documentation of a case so how to go about it like because i want to make it as a case series because it will add more value to my paper right but only one case i have which have very detailed images description so that that is worth publishing so how to go about that see you don't have to have great documentation for all the cases that you have okay you don't all you don't have to submit all five but you know but the if you say i have five cases but at least two or three you need to show the editor and the editor, isn't it so not all five or all seven need great documentation but at least half of them should have good documentation uh, you know that is basically to prove that you know i actually have seen some of these yeah uh, so that's pretty much it but then uh, like you said if you just submit that one case is highly likely that it's going to get rejected because yeah. there is already something out there 
also if you have three four cases you need to still extract more information and make it more educative for people isn't it why is it that people should read this three four cases instead of just one because you know say you might say one behave differently than the other and or mm -hmm. all four behave differently one is a prototype case which is like literature but then there are these second and third case which did not behave the way they were supposed to or they recovered when they were not supposed to or they did not recover when they were supposed to or things like that and then you make uh, some postulations in a discussion saying why that is so isn't it so that makes it so this is just one perspective isn't it but overall uh, you need to add something more to what is existing and what is known and then have documentation at least half the cases i think that that can help you okay also one more question sir what i encounter while while writing my thesis and i'm uh, working on one manuscript is like how to choose my keywords and one more thing is a key message is also there in IGO uh, manuscript writing, like how to write a key message and like how many key words are allowed. Is it the words that we most commonly use in our entire paper or what is it like? What exactly does it mean? The keyword essentially at the back end, you need to understand the keyword is going to be used for by search engines okay. to show people your paper if they are searching for something similar. Okay. And so that is how the keywords work. So what most journals would want at least five keywords, but then, uh, you know, most search engines like uh, PubMed and Scopus, they, mm. they uh, you know, it's almost like crawling over your manuscript and still picking out things which, uh, which would match. PubMed talks something uh, called mesh terms. So they will try and match your keywords to the closest mesh term that is there. Okay. Uh, you know, so then keywords essentially really mean that, uh, you know, will your article show in a, uh, search if somebody is looking for something similar you think you have enough keywords so that they will appear on a search then that's you know that's good enough but about five keywords are most are what most journals would want uh, so Bhuti, sir i think uh, i am out of time now and uh, i would appreciate it i think uh, your time yeah sorry i think your time to leave and yeah. before uh, dr sandhas the summarize and give the vote of thanks i think uh, the, we have got the responsibility for the host today Nibaji, Apka, would you like to play the video? Doing summary, of course. Uh, uh, Dr. Sabesachi, as usual, excellent presentation and lot of information. So I just have uh, one or two queries. Like uh, you have shown Jam and other top journals, which also like case reports can be published. But what is the cost for it? I think I have tried uh, last within the last six months few, but then re retracted myself uh, just looking at the uh, cost. Your inputs, please. I think it's, uh, you've got some other. I think Sengupta has got some other programs. He has to leave. He said by nine o'clock he will be leaving. Uh, so he's not there. So anybody else can answer? That Natasha can say. Natasha. While while he was talking, he said it it does varies from thousand to ten thousand dollars. Yes, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so it is easy to just tell that you can publish, but if when people like uh, me. Uh, has to give it from my pocket. Most of the time, the institute does not give it. 
to back to square one. You can request uh -huh. some some journals also. So consider your request for no. Now so, India is not considered poor, so they are not <laughs> considering it. No, it is not. It is not. It is not a country because content also important. If your content is good, they consider. I didn't get you. Sir. Last slide. Yeah, yeah, they consider so, sir, reduction, but they don't exempt. A reduction of maybe. No waiver will be there. Yeah, a deduction can be made, uh, but. India nowadays is not considered among the low economic uh, countries. Yes. Uh, though Pakistan yes. is still a low economic country and India is yes, not. Yes, yes. So if you ask okay. for a waiver on the basis of being from a poor country, that is not allowed. Yes. But you, you can, can have a Pakistani uh, co-author there. Yes, you can still ask for waivers. Um, yes. The way but is, they didn't suppose you have a very, very they... unique case. Suppose you have a very unique case which mm. has not been seen the world over. Obviously, okay. the journal would love to have, publish it in their journal. I mean, the publishers would like it in their journals rather than, you know, saying no to you and you go and publish it in another journal. So they okay. may want. <laughs> They'll pay you also. <laughs> no, no. Never. <laughs> So they won't anyway, pay you. I've not heard of a journal. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. So we have come to almost uh, concluding this talk, and uh, as uh, we are coming, uh, thank you. I'd like to thank the IJOC basically to provide the platform and our uh, uh, mentor, Dr. Rajit Babu Mazi, uh, my friend, Dr. Chaitra. Uh, presenter Dr. Sabya Sachi Shadukta uh, and all the panelists here who have contributed to the discussion and uh, the postgraduates who have also uh, contributed to uh, this discussion. Not the least, Entoed for pro providing the platform. With this, Santosh, I think you have missed Dr. Doyle. <laughs> I said all <laughs> panelists, I cannot remember. <laughs> <so many. laughs> She was so, our guest moderator today. Thank so, you very much, Dr. Doyle, for uh, moderating this session on behalf of IJA. Yes, I think. Thank you, everybody, for joining with us. It's a really wonderful program. We learned a lot. And a small announcement. I think due to some unaware circumstances, our next OATIS program will be next week only. So next Tuesday, we'll have our OATIS program. So... Probably, uh, I request all of you to join again next week, Tuesday, 8 p.m. for our OATS, I think, 12 program. So, thank you, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night, sir. Good night, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.